Okay, so we're back again tonight for the next stage of the build. All this has now dried off and is looking okay. I'm a wee bit disappointed. There's a slight diff discrepancy in the gap um, between the moulding at the bottom and the start of the, the, the window here and here, but it's less than half a millimetre. I don't think it's worth going to the hassle of changing it. I think once it's painted it'll hopefully blend in a wee bit better. But it's all set and ready and I've also taken out that little support at the back because this centre post seems to have sort of um, strengthened uh, this card section enough um, that it sits a lot more flush. There's a wee bit of play in it but I think once any sort of shop interior goes in behind that'll sort of help push it out just that little bit more. So. What we're looking at to do tonight is we'll get the door fitted and we'll do the windows here. Now in the prototype the window has little arches um, creating three panels for the window itself. What I would like to do is to try and replicate those three arches and what I had done was showing you me cutting those out and then I looked at the camera and discovered that the thing wasn't recording. But what I've basically done is this window here measures 21 millimeters across which makes it very easy for working out how wide each of the three panels is going to be at seven millimeters so if you take your seven millimeters and on the seven millimeter mark you mark just either side of that by half a millimeter for the um, inclusion of the uh, the upright post that will go in or the upright part of the frame that will go in and you do that both times and then with a little curve um, item you know this is an old cup of some description you can draw a line just to create a little bit of an arch and once cut it gives you that okay now there's a very very minimal look of an arch to that but it's just enough to give an added effect and what I've done is I've done two of those and glued them together and that was at the stage where I discovered that the camera wasn't rolling Now you'll see on this side in particular it's a little bit rougher but these two have just been glued together and what I'll do is I'll let them go off for a while and then I can take the craft knife and do any sort of minor trimming and sanding just to make them look um, much more uh, similar but by gluing two parts together it's giving us something a lot firmer to glue to the underside of the window plus whenever we go to do our our post um, they're not posts but you know what I mean running down from that window to create the two the, uh, the three panes and um, it also gives a wee bit of extra purchase for that too so while that is going off, we will look at the door. Now, where's my, there it is there. So the door has been done in exactly, well, almost exactly the same way as we did the, the back door of the, the, the building. Um, again, looking at the prototype, there is a transom window, which we'll take into account and we'll put it, um, the frame for that in after the door goes in, because it'll give it something to rest up against. Um, but the door itself I have measured out. Now in my case it is 8 point, sorry, uh, what is it? It's 11 millimetres in width and I have cut it to the same height as the front door of the house or marked it to the same height as the front door of the house. Now after that what I've done is this um, again looking at the prototype the door looks like a, a double door um, so what I've done hopefully you can see that there it's maybe not that easy there's a center line that I have scribed right to the top but the other line comes just beneath that and then I have scribed other lines to create the panel effect of the door right the way across so that only the one line goes right to the top of the top of the cut because that will denote that the door sw um, splits in the middle and swings open you know uh, like that there and then the others are your effects for the actual door itself now that there lights maybe a wee bit better 
okay and again I've just followed the same technique that I did for the back door so I didn't bother showing you that because I figured I was just repeating myself so what we'll do is we'll cut that out now Okay, and it's now ready to go in so we'll just check to make sure I want this to be quite a tight fit so it sits nice and snug it's going to be too tight I need to trim actually a little bit off it or can I get away with it by putting it in and bringing it around I'm not sure no I'm going to have to trim a little bit off that right let's have a look at that now It's better. Alright, now, so that'll go in like so. Now what we should probably have done, which I haven't done, is to add a couple of wee supports along the back. Wonder if we can get away without it. I think we can get away without it with just using our eye. So by having it fairly tight that's sitting nicely in place and what we can then do is just run a little bit bead of glue along the back of it because we're not going to see that I'm just trying to make sure that it is sitting the same both sides which I think it is yeah well we'll just go with that and if we can run the contact to just along the inside of it, the capillary action should be enough to hold that into place. And maybe what we could do actually just while that glue is there is I still have the odd little scrap of plastic from the, you know, the initial cutting of framework and you know for the windows we might as well just pop that in there just to give it a little bit more purchase and it means any sort of heavy handedness won't have that thing popping out from behind I need another wee strip and do the same on that side too Tweezers needed for that. That's better. Okay. And that's our door in. And then we just need to add a little strip of our um what one's that? That's the one mil uh square rod across the top there. So I know that is what did I say it was? Eleven millimeters. Yeah, and we'll just run a little run of glue across the top there and we want this to sort of sit 
slightly forward of the door. Again, just purely for definition that the door is inset, it's not actually, you know, we don't want that framework sitting flush. Right, I think that's okay. It's enough to give the definition that we're looking for. Yeah, okay. So, that's that done. Right, so back to these here. These should have gone off enough now. And I'm just going to... Um, clean those little arches up a little bit. I'm not going to fuss too much about it because they will be barely seen. I think it's just a nice little touch to give to the building. It just adds that little extra detail. Um, you know, then going just for a square, a square window. So those are in. And we will take our tweezers and make sure they fit. I may need a wee trim. And what we're going to try and do is bring these as far forward as we can. But again, we just want to set it back a little bit from the frame so that we get that definition again and make sure sure they're sitting on straight now because we're working with a lot of fiddly stuff there may well be a case that once all this is dried in you might want to just take a little drop of sandpaper and that just to clean off any r glue residue that you find before painting. Okay, I see that. That little arch just adds a nice wee, wee touch to it. So the final thing that we need to do now is drop a post from each of these. Now we're looking at this here. This one here is, I think it's a wee bit rough. I should have cleaned that up a bit more. Let's hope we can do that with the, the thing in place. I think that'll be okay. We'll just double check the measurements of the post as they go in. Fifteen. Fifteen. And we're using again the square one mil rod for this section. Okay, slight change of tact on this one. Um, the little curved section I've taken and put flush with the back of the wall so that we can apply our masking tape over it. Right, so we've got the first one here and we're going to add a wee dab of glue top and bottom. My hands are shaking. This is very fiddly work. Fortunately, we only have to do this twice We we'll want to try and get that top and bottom sitting flush. If we can. We may need to sit forward a wee bit at the front. There we go. Uh, 
That's alright, that's alright. We'll go with that. Oh, just hit it. I'm very much just checking by eye in terms of whether it is straight or not. But I think that looks okay. And you see the arch actually stands out a little bit more now whenever you get the post in. Let's get the other one in. It is very much a case trial and error and the finest little margins of trimming <laughs> and then a semi steady hand to get it in place which seems to have deserted me tonight at the bottom. I think that will do. Let's take the mask and tape off at the back. And they are. That is that more or less done. So again I am going to leave this to dry overnight and then once it's done it will get an application of paint exactly the same uh, humbral number that I don't recall the number of as the rest of the building. But yeah. Do you know what? I really am quite happy how that looks now. So, look, this is probably going to be the most challenging aspect of the build. Um, if you can get past this, you can get past it pretty much anything. Uh, I'll put a couple of photographs there at the end uh, as to where we are with regards to this. But in essence, that finishes this episode. Next week we'll move on to, or next time we will move on to something a little bit uh, more straightforward. And that's the installation of the main roof and the extension roof and the tiling of both of those. So once again, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope it's been entertaining and I will catch up with you all soon.